I was looking for something and I came across some of my photo albums, which reminded me to look for something. But in the meantime, I got a nice present from Cam. Cam Cam. Hey Tony, this is Cam. It's a gift for you. I made Oh, he made it with was about 12 years old. Uh I can't go fishing with this if you made it when you were 12. That is that is awesome. Yeah, I can't uh where's our fishing gear at, Barrett? <laughs> When we moved in, we just kind of <laughs> over there somewhere, stuff out. <laughs> there it is. Pear, pear found an old tackle box. <laughs> uh, oh look, my my survival pan, my survival fishing. What have we got in here? Bobbers, hooks. I almost feel bad putting your, uh, what is that, 20 pound, 15 pound. Electro tank. That's, this is not, yeah, this is not my main tackle box. This was one that's kind of, a, has all the spare stuff in it. Cause I wouldn't take this, I normally wouldn't take, this is funny. Not unless I was in a hairy, hairy mood. So I'm not gonna put your your lure in there. I can't believe you found this, Barry. <laughs> Barry, you know what happened? Did I tell you? I accidentally sent the wrong cube to Cam's brother, Brandon. So um, this is the one we were gonna shoot the hole through. A hole. This is the one that Tal Flater Mouse shot that's a five five six divot in a tungsten cube and i sent the wrong one i was supposed to send him the other one that i bought from the company so the company wants their cube back because they love tal flavor mouse more than i do i love tal flavor mouse jeff but they apparently love him more than i do because they really want the cube back and i'm going to send it to them because they were so nice to help us out was sending us another one. <laughs> so anyway, we're gonna send this back. But let me see if I can find something right quick. So Beard, I was trying to find some old pictures. There's my brother Mike. God, yeah. God bless him. God rest him. Peace, my brother. Old log cabin I built 25 years ago. I was actually trying to find. Oh wait, there, Barrett. Yeah. There you are, son. Me and James. How old are you? You're there too? So this is like 26 years ago. <laughs> I built this cabin for Ann Coulter. Not the Ann Coulter, but our Ann Coulter in Chattanooga. But I was trying, what I was trying to find was, um, now watch me. Oh, my friend Jeff Hood, who was killed on the Appalachian Trail by a maniac. And uh, his girlfriend, he and his girlfriend were killed. But we, here we are, we're climbing. There's me, tired. Can you see? Yeah. <sighs> Uh, I was trying to find, um, this is when I was in inner, inner city, we were doing work on the, gosh, everything's falling apart. I was trying to find, um, some old, uh, football pictures. Oh, here's the better pictures of Jeff. Can you see? Let's see if I can find, there's Bruce Rogers. He helped map the climbs on Sunset Rock on Lookout Mountain. They wrote a book about them. Uh, there he is, free climbing like a goober. There's me. <laughs> Can you see? Mm -hmm. That was about a 60 footer we did. Now what Bruce would do, Bruce would free climb and then go, he would go up first. See? Map it out. He would, no, well, yeah, he would free climb and go put, and put protection in, and then he would go up and drop the rope down, see, for us, so we'd have protection. My good buddy Jeff, man, I don't know if y'all know the story, look up Jeff Hood, uh, Appalachian Trail, he and his girlfriend were killed back in, I think, 90, but, um, 
good friend of mine. There me is again. Look, they, I got two two pictures of me climbing. One's there was this little ledge about halfway up. I was taking a rest, <laughs> <laughs> and then I was climbing right there. We used to go climbing. We'd come home from work or something, and Bruce would say, "Hey, jump in the Fiat, hit an old Fiat," and um, we'd run up to Signal Mountain or Lookout Mountain. Anyway, got the stamp collection. This is not really a memory lane. I do have a point behind all this. <laughs> One more step down memory lane. This is this is growing up in Tennessee, okay? Your gun rack above your bed and my baritone. <laughs> You're awesome, dude. <laughs> on, the, on the dresser. This is the Robinson Apartments down across from the Helmut County Courthouse. This does no, no justice. Um... Big, beautiful, old apartment building. Big sliding doors. You can't you, you can't really see the millwork that was in this place, but this was my little room. It's funny. What's on the counter over there? What is that? Oh, look, it's, look at the old clock. I'm gonna drink. What, that's my 20 gauge shotgun right there, right? And that is my, was it a Winchester or uh, it's my 22 right there. And I made that gun rack in shock class. Oh. Yeah. Can you see yourself? Yeah. <laughs> What's that huge lake? Is it Lake Pontchartrain? Oh, yeah. That, it's so big, it looks like an ocean down there, Louisiana. Bet you sitting in the water down there. <laughs> I was looking for some other pictures. There's Alcatraz. This was a trip we took out to San Francisco for work, and um, it was right after the uh, earthquake. See that? That happened. I think it was the earthquake of '87. I think, and they were reinforcing all the buildings, all the old buildings. And of course, that's the kind of stuff I wanted to see, and everybody else wanted to see. You know, the Hard Rock Cafe and. <laughs> <She ran. laughs> uh, uh, I did like I did like Alamo Hill though the famous the infamous row of houses uh, going down the the, the hill. But what was I going to show? Um, Al Capone cell. Anyway, I know people don't want to see all this crap. I'm going to eventually find what I'm looking for. Oh, here's when we started Habitat here. Habitat for Humanity. And you have to go to America's Georgia um, and get uh, initiated. Hmm. Um, that's Superdome. Um, and uh, look, Bourbon Street. Um, is that a Bourbon Street or is that the alley off of Bourbon Street? Anyway... And I was in I was really impressed with all the old farmhouses, the old architecture in America's Georgia. But anyway, you got to go down there to get. Uh, there's your mom. Yep. Uh, you have to go down there to get. Uh, it's like a cult down there. Habitat for Humanity. The original Habitat for Humanity. They literally looked at Millard Fuller almost like a Jim Jones type. It was scary. And I was like, what are we getting into? And I'm just kind of kidding around. The people who know about Habitat, the original, the origins of Habitat know what I'm talking about. But it's a great organization, so I'm just kind of kidding around. Here's the first construction crew while I'm holding the camera uh, for Habitat in, in Chattanooga. Wait, this is our first house, the first day. I took this picture on the, on the right there. That's my sister Beth and Bruce, her husband, behind her. There's Jeff Hood again, one of my good friends, the guy who died on Apple H. Appalachian Trail. There's Wes. I forgot the other guy's names. But there's my old green Ford pickup truck. Barry, you know how um, when I was in high school, I went to a vocational school, half a day, a building, a building trade school. Then after I started, after we started Habitat for Humanity in Chattanooga, I went back to the building trade school and said, "Hey, can you all help us build these houses?" And this is the first crew from uh, Hickson High School. 
um, that helped. And that's Frank Hale, my old instructor right there. And um, they would build wall sections in the shop and bring them out on a big trailer. Oh my God, this is turning out to be not a word on the NFL, but a classic photograph of Venture. This is an original Polaroid of me and David. Uh, I don't think people, this is 1979. I think, I think people tend, people on the internet, especially like in the bushcraft and the backpacking community, don't realize that some of us lived a whole life before the internet. <laughs> this is me and David when we were teenagers. Uh, back backpacking in the Appalachian Mountains. Okay? Look at that old crappy tent, old camouflage. Look at our old, look at our old crappy backpacks that we had. Those external frame packs. The, look, the old canteen, army surplus canteen hanging there in the snow. It wasn't supposed to snow, but we woke up with snow on the ground. And I've seen the side of the tent over there, bear the right side of the tent caving in. So anyway, I just, it's just weird sometimes and people, you know, think all oh, old people are pathetic. But, um, there's another picture of your mom. Yep. Big hair, big 80s hair. But, you know, when you, before you give old people a hard time, just remember that there were whole lives, you know, many lives lived before. Your mom caught this fish when I took her fishing and she didn't know she caught it. I, said, I kept saying, yeah, you caught a fish, pull it up, pull it up, look at the boom can. And she kept saying, no, I haven't caught a fish. I said, yes, you caught a fish. Look how little it is. pretty funny, dude. <laughs> It's a bait fish. Now you know you've truly gone down memory lane uh, when you can find a floppy disk in perfect condition. I think this micro solutions, I think there's a CAD program on here. How oh, wild well Micro solutions. What is that? I have to look that up. Hmm. I was losing my hair at an early age, wasn't I? But, mm -hmm. Is that, is that my hat line going across there? This was the first house that we built. And of course, what year is that? Does that say 87 on it? Look. According to Tony Griffey, the organization's building coordinator, the abundance of good weather is funny. Hmm. Barrett, these are some of the first homes that I built when I had my own little crew right out of high school. Good, Dad. This hidden harbor. These were a bunch of houses in a in a circle in a subdivision that were what was his name? His mom was a realtor. And they were all turned down slabs. Real easy to build. So, this was back you know, when I was into photography and I was trying to make my houses look old. So I'd take an old, hell, land camera or something. I would uh, take photographs of my projects with. This, believe it or not, this is still today one of the biggest houses. This is one of the first houses I ever built for Lamar Sitton when I was probably 20. 19 or 20 years old, and it's still today the biggest house. <laughs> the thing went on forever. I mean, it just went on forever. An old log cabin I built. A little farmhouse I did on Sigma Mountain. There's my old fort. I know y'all are wondering what the heck this is, but I'm trying, I was trying to find, uh, this is Bruce Rogers, an architect friend of mine. He got me to frame, 
frame this house for him. And then he, well, we did the outside and some on the inside, but he finished it. Very cool. I need, all my photo albums are all disorganized. There's Barrett, there's a baby. And Skinny Tony. <laughs> there's my mom holding you. Oh, that's when I was born. Yeah, yeah. That's a baby. Is that my dad? Man, I would have never guessed that was your dad, dad. I don't, I don't remember. I guess it is. I don't remember. I remember him that well. We played the same at the same time, so I'm thinking we're getting close, Barrett. I know y'all are getting tired. Most people have not made it this far. My brother, God bless him. Let's see, there he is again, Soldier Mike. Crazy, I don't know, the army did something to him. But I don't know what it was. They never, they never told me, he never told me either. Look, there's me and Mike and Beth. Man, she looks a lot like Sarah right there. Mm-hmm. That's back when you could have an Afro and you, and you didn't have to try to have one, you just had one. And I know my brother didn't try to have an afro. It's <laughs> like they used to put engagements in the paper. <laughs> yep. Yeah, they did. It's me and your mom, her mom and dad, my mom and what's his name? My mom's boyfriend. <laughs> oh, they were just friends. I'm just kidding. See, I used to be good looking. <laughs> 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 Barrett and Alley. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, this is funny. This is way too. Oh, Alley Goose. Mm -hmm. Alley Goose. Oh, that's when I joined a Toon Design Architecture. We're finally where I can remember things. Yeah, I became an. I actually became a uh, an associate there after five years. I was really proud of myself. Barrett. The young Barrett and the beginning to become an artist Barrett. Mm. <laughs> There's another picture of my dad. See what I mean? There's an actor. I'll have to look up that actor that he, that when he was a little bit older, looked just like Sarah Matthew. What are they doing? What are we doing there? Oh, that's an inner city ministries because there's Herman. I know there's a football picture in here somewhere. Now this is this kind of makes me mad because little buddy, where? Yeah, little buddy. I was definitely in seventh grade because that's when I started doing that hairstyle. <laughs> what is the the spiked? <laughs> but it was the Simpsons or whatever. Yeah, I guess. That's your cousin. I don't, I don't know why I did it. <laughs> This, this is what makes me mad, is that I was the middle child, and I don't, everybody else got, has all these pictures, you know? <laughs> I'm the salty Stephen child. Stephen Oh my God, Dad, did you really just say that? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Dang it, I know they're in here somewhere. They're not in chronological order. <laughs> no, no family albums are ever in chronological order. Finally, the last photo album. All right. Number 44. There's Tony and Beth. My sister was a cheerleader. <laughs> huh. Well, Hicks and Bears. Let's see. Which one is this? Is this still the Bears? Yeah. That's my sister, Lower Right. It's funny. Cheerleaders. And. This is a different, I think this was the Chiefs. Where am I? I guess it was the Bears. There's number 44. There I am. Isn't that funny? It's cool, Dad. <laughs>
Oh, good lord. I've never seen any of this. We've got some old, old stuff coming. Oh, oh my, my god. gosh. Oh my god. That's Is my that grandfather, Newton? my grandmother, and my uncle. JL. We called him JL. That is a classic picture right there. That's amazing. I think this is that same great great grandmother that has the Indian blood in her. See that? Mm -hmm. The one that was standing on the porch. Watch your move. I don't know who these guys are. Oh, look. Can you help me? Is this, what does that say? Uh, Miss Vader Thomas. I know that's not Vader. No way. Oh, you know what? Pauline my grandfather's. Um, no, my grandfather's name was Lemus. Mr. 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 Okay, Vader. you know what? My, my, there's a Thomas in our, the Thomas is a name uh, in our family because um, they are the ones, one of the Thomases were, was the ones that owned part of the, the national park, the Smoky Mountains National Park. He had a hundred acres. Mm -hmm. Uh, that was just a part of it and they gave him a dollar an acre I don't know if this is him I don't know if that's him but that's somebody in our family and there let's see let's see okay is that me and my sister my mother yeah and my dad I think that's my dad my grandfather on the right, uh, that must be me in the front. Yeah, that's me. The Mike. Me, player. Beth, and my brother Mike. Amazing. This is my mother. What's that? Sunday school training course. All right, Sunday school, 1955. Look at my uncle. Funny. Who does he look like? He looks like the actor. Oh, that's my mom and my uncle when they were kids. And my uncle again. Well, that's enough memory lane. Probably too much, right? I'm still mad that I don't. I know I've got more football pictures somewhere. I played for six years. So Barrett, did I put you to sleep? No, it was interesting. Though. <laughs> if I, when I get really old, can I give you all those pictures and you take care of them forever? <laughs> I was thinking about scanning them all. I have scanned some of them. I've got some of them on the computer, but there's just way too many of them. But I guess what started out, the whole intention of this video was to first um, open up that box and show Cam. Cam had sent me back the tungsten cube that I need to send back to the tungsten company. Um, and he said, I got, I put a present in there for you. And I was like, that's cool. So I had to open it, right? Because otherwise I would have just shipped it back to the company. Well, that's such a cool thing, Cam. I, I really, and I'll, I'll treasure and I'll keep it. I put it in the one of my old box treasure boxes <laughs> with all those photos and you know uh i've kept those for many years but anyway the that's what started the video but what i wanted to do too is make a comment about the nfl when i was a kid that was the thing when, when i was growing up dads put sons in football right that's what you did you didn't play soccer you played football played for like six years me and my brother sometimes me and my brother actually played on the same team and um uh, he he quit before i did because he was a year older <clears throat> but i always knew i wanted to build things right and that that playing football was not that much of a passion i loved football but i didn't love going and playing and hearing people you know on the sidelines yelling and at the kids, you know, because that's constantly, you know, parents are a big problem in Little League. You know, they just are. It's it's taken way too seriously. And because they everybody thinks their kid's going to grow up to be in the NFL, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I always knew I wasn't going to be, and I didn't want to be. I wanted to build things, 
even at an early age, I wanted to, all I wanted to do was play with Lincoln Logs and stuff like that. You know, we didn't have Link, 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 uh, what is it? Legos. Legos. We didn't have Legos when I was a kid, I don't think. Maybe we were just too poor. I don't know. But I guess I understand uh, because I played all the way up to when I was going into junior high. And by that time, I was sick of it, really just burnt out. And my friends kept getting me to play, want to play. I was like, no. And in high school, I had my friends want me to play. And I was like, no, I'm going to this building trade school half. And I couldn't get, I already had to go to summer school just to get credits in, right, to graduate. Because we literally, I was only at high school half the time, you know. So, but I, what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that <sighs> the guys in the NFL, man, you got it. Mate. I mean, you really with you're making millions of dollars playing a sport. It's just a sport. That's all it is. And you know, to go and take and kneel. If if we, it was never. You see, and it's not about the First Amendment. I've been thinking about this. This is not a free speech. It's a decency. Yeah. Uh, it's not a free speech thing. Because I've been watching other people say, oh, the First Amendment doesn't apply to... It doesn't. Who, the Constitution is a piece of paper. It's a concept. It's a philosophy. Okay? But decency is also a philosophy. Mm -hmm. And that's what I live by. And also, uh, and part of that being a decent person is remembering the past, right? And honoring traditions, okay? And we don't have anything else. We don't have, I don't carry the Constitution around rolled up in my back pocket, but I do, as a part of me, have these memories uh, and, you know, tradition. And that is what built our country. That, that feeling of tradition and decency and being a, a human, a decent human, is what built our country. Battery, the f so long, such a long video, I'm getting a battery warning now. <laughs> I had to plug the phone in. But my point is, is that you're not doing, I, I don't feel any better for you. I don't. I, I feel worse. I don't like the NFL now. I don't like professional sports even though I played football, and we played football for years and years after that, right? I mean, well, I loved football, not as a uh, organized, just as a fun sport, right? Um, but we had organized teams that we play on the weekend, but we did not, it wasn't organized like, you know, that. So <clears throat> I loved it, but I can't stand it now. I can't stand the NFL. And honestly, I can't say I'm boycotting the NFL now because I haven't watched. <laughs> yeah, you haven't watched football. I haven't watched football in forever. I mean, my wife loves the foot, the NFL. She loves football more than I do. Yeah. And I just, I'm just sick of professional sports because the people, they're overpaid and they're such, they're such spoiled brats, and they're trying to use their little time that don't you see. It's not about race, and that's what they don't understand. And they're trying to say it's not about disrespecting the flag. Well, don't do it. Then find another time to do it. Don't take. Don't do it during the national anthem. If you got, if you you got, you got all this money, take your freaking million dollars and pay for some advertising, or pay for some kind of campaign, or do do something on your own time. You know, don't take time from people who are wanting to watch. A football game to relax on a Sunday afternoon. They don't care about your politics. Yeah, it's the one time we can take a break from it all, and it has nothing to do with racism or First Amendment rights. It's just human decency. That's all it is. The parrot, we gotta go. Let's see, thanks for playing the guitar. No problem. <laughs>